All right. Hey, Rob, check on your uh, phone. Make sure uh, you see me live there, okay? Um, using a weak signal here, I think. But uh, hey, guys, how you doing? Andy Weintraub here, NJ Home Heroes. I'm with Home Smart First Advantage, njhomeheroes.com, uh, a website. I'm a real estate agent. I'm an investor, and uh, I love the industry. I love helping people to, uh, to buy the home of their dreams, to sell their homes uh, so that they can move on and do whatever is, is going to make them happy. Uh, you know, that's in the cards for all of us, right? We can only hope. And uh, I don't know what that means for you, but uh, when the time comes and you want to sell your home, you want to buy a home, maybe you're an investor. Hey, Rob Foglio, thanks for the like, man. I appreciate it. Sammy Jimenez, Pam Montavo. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Um, you know, it's a tightening market out there. I know they say it's a buyer's market across the country. Uh, here in South Jersey, it's, it seems to be a, a seller's market. I mean, that's what the numbers say. And um, I've had buyers now for the last couple of months. We'll make multiple offers during the week and inventory is going like, like that. So really have to be on top of your game. Uh, really have to, to, to hone, hone in on, on what you want, what's important in terms of the offer. And when you construct the perfect offer, you're greatly increasing your chances of getting, uh, you know, again, the home of your dreams, getting your offer accepted. Right. And that's the whole goal. The whole goal is to put you and your family or whoever it is into somewhere you're going to be happy. You can grow with it or buy it, flip it, sell it, whatever it is, right, that's going to make you happy. So let's talk uh, just really quickly, just two or three quick minutes on uh, on what it is, um, some some quick ideas on, on how to get your offer accepted, really maximize uh, those options, okay? So number one, we've said it a million times. I've spoken with you, uh, with Kevin Zenstein, uh, uh, you know, about this, uh, my friend Alex Luboff, Jared Feldman, I mean, all my mortgage guys, I've been a mortgage pro. I'm not anymore, but uh, I was a mortgage pro for a while. And uh, get your pre-approval, right, Tom Fox? Get your pre-approval, okay? Have a pre-approval. Pre-qualification is when you give uh, over the phone your information to, uh, you know, a finance person. They tell you, yeah, it looks like you can get $400,000 house or $100,000 or whatever it is. Then you take the time to go out and find a house, and guess what? They didn't see the income docs, or they didn't actually have everything in place uh, so you don't actually know. So get your pre-approval. Call your financing pro. Give them your income docs. Let them see your W-2s. The, most lenders or a lot of lenders will do a full pre-underwrite to make sure that all you're missing is appraisal title, but they'll know that your numbers actually work. And then you can get out there and find out right, what works for you. In terms of the offer, handing them a full, fully underwritten pre-approval is like almost like a cash offer. Okay, except it's not, it's a mortgage commitment or something similar, but uh, that's that's close. So get your pre-approval, number one, please, okay? All right, um, number two, you, ha you already have no doubt you're, pre you're, you're, uh, uh, you know, you're pre-approved uh, for financing. So now you wanna make sure that you, if possible, try and put down a bigger deposit, right? Think about it, it's like anything else in life. The more skin in the game you're willing to show, the more reliable you are as a, a person in that transaction. You look like a stronger buyer. It shows your commitment level. It shows that you're really willing. Hey, Richard Blank, what's up, buddy? It shows that you're really willing to go a little extra. You put the skin, your skin in the game. They know you're committed. They know you're going to do what you need to do uh, in order to get this in order to get this deal done. Okay, so um, if there's an issue, there are contingency clauses in there. In Jersey, you get a three-day turn and review. Uh, but standard New Jersey contract, if there's an issue, you should get that back, no problem. Specific to your contract, I don't want to say that's everything. Make sure you check with your uh, real estate professional, me if you're here in South Jersey or whomever it is. Excuse me, there's a bug. Did not just catch him. I'm not that fast. Um, Chris Ward, what's up? Khalil, what's up, dude? Come on, let's make some phone calls. Lee Stein, John, oh, Matt Webb, what's up, brother? Hi, Nancy, out there in uh, Chai Town, Hone Houdini Thai. Alex Santos, Dave Townsend. Wow, this is great. Aisha, this is awesome. Thanks for coming out, guys. And if you have any questions, yo, what's up, Khalil? If you have any questions, please write them down here in the comment. Wait, my thing's backwards. Right down there. Uh, if you want to hear me, uh, you know, if you want to talk about something else the next time, give me your ideas. I'd love to know about it, okay? But uh, put down a bigger deposit. So, so far, we have pre-approval. Get pre-approved. Number two, bigger deposit shows you're, uh, shows you're interested, okay? Uh, and committed. Number three, now, obviously, you want to check on this with your experts, be it your attorney, your real estate agent, your financial professional, whomever it is. But in this contract, there are typically contingencies, and you can shorten some of these contingency times if it's within reason. Why close? Why say you're going to close in 45 days? Maybe the seller's in a hurry. 
So if you can do 30 days reasonably and your experts agree, then why not shorten it to 30 days? Not only does it make everybody realize that they're going to get ahead of the game if possible, but again, it shows that you're really willing to work uh, with, with the seller. And that makes them that much more likely to work with you should something else come up because I don't know if you're familiar with this in real estate, but things do come up. And that's a terrible joke, not funny. I know, Hone. Uh, but uh, things always come up, right? Can't be avoided. This is life. Okay. Uh, number three, um, you are allowed to remove certain con contingencies. I, uh, when I bought a condo down the shore, uh, my bachelor pad, uh, 500 square feet of heaven. Many people watching this uh, uh, spent a lot of time with me down there, right? It was, I mean, like 15 years of just amazing fun. Um, Alan Cohen, I don't know how many years he stayed there. I think he probably owes me half the mortgage, right, by this point. Although he did bring a roll of toilet paper once. Uh, thanks, Cohen. Uh, but seriously, um, you know, I bought that place and I knew my financing was in place. I knew my finances. I was in mortgages then. This is back in uh, 07, or no, 04, I think. Uh, when I was a free, free wheeling bachelor, right back in the day, I love my wife. I love my kids. Wouldn't trade it, but man, that was fun. So what I did was I removed the bidding was getting hot and heavy, right? Uh, and I needed an edge. I didn't have that much more money to put down. So I, I waived the mortgage contingency and it got me the offer. And I was, I was giving them uh, maybe five grand less, I think than their highest offer, but that's what got me the offer. And, um, Again, I'm not recommending that you do this every time. Uh, you want to make sure that it works for you and check with your professionals, okay? But it's a great way to, to let the buyer, to show the buyer that, hey, you're willing to go the extra, extra, extra yard. And if you don't get the mortgage, you still have to buy it. In that case, I would have still had to buy, but I was prepared, okay? All right, um, <clears throat> next, be flexible in your closing times, again, if possible. If, you, if you're not ready, um, if it's not possible, if it doesn't make sense, then obviously you don't want to offer it because if they say yes, you'll have to accommodate that, that, uh, that portion of the, uh, the contract. But um, you know, if you're ready, if you can do it, again, um, sometimes the lender will have docs waiting at the title company, have funds waiting at the title company three weeks in advance. And if you're ready to go and the seller's ready to go, then you know, that's going to sweeten the deal, right? Um, okay. This is a great one. I love this one. This is uh, my friend Sammy. Uh, uh, Sammy uh, uh, loves this. Loves this one. This was his idea. So Sammy, I'm, I'm sharing it. But uh, write a personal note. I love this touch because, again, let's say you're neck and neck with another offer, uh, but your personal note may affect the seller in a certain way. May pull on their heartstrings. And all's fair in love and war. This is contracts, right? There's nothing wrong with saying, hey. I loved your home. I could see raising my family in it. I have great memories. I used to play in this neighborhood. You know, whatever it is, it can make a huge difference. I mean, imagine reading what I'm saying and hearing the emotional uh, output that I'm, that I'm giving you right now, right? It has a different effect. So when you offer a note, obviously you can write the wrong note too, but keep it simple. Why you love their home, why you could see yourself or how you could see yourself in there, raising a family or growing a successful business or, you know, just seeing yourself in it, it can put you over the edge. And if you don't believe me, think about the last time your kid asked you 99 times and you said, no, 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 no. And of course he wore you down, right? My kids are experts at it already. Uh, but, you know, like, dad, I love it so much. I just, I really, I love smashers. Uh, smash, I don't know, smashers, crashers, millipeters, teeny titans, I mean, you name it, right? But they love it and they get they get me. They get me right there. And I'm a big softy. And uh as as some of you may know. Uh so um it works, guys. It works. And if it's that one little one little push to get your seller over the edge to take your offer, you'll be so glad you did it. And if you're not sure how to do it, let your kids write the letter for you. Okay. That'll give you a great idea. All right. Um, and finally, make a very strong offer that they cannot refuse. Make it a fair offer that they cannot refuse because there's got to be enough of the pie for everybody. If we're too greedy or if I'm too greedy as a buyer, why is my seller going to, even if they want, even if they have to take it, they're less likely to do it because we are human beings. There's emotion unless they have to do it. Okay, maybe. But if they have a choice, maybe they'll, they won't take my offer if I'm being too greedy 
uh, and they'll take somebody else because you know just have the right emotional emotional play there. So make it a fair offer. And I think if you follow follow these tips, right? So let's go over them again. I have them written down here. Pre-approval, put down a bigger deposit, shorten your contingencies, uh, remove your contingencies. Hey, Yadi, uh, be flexible on your closing time. Write a personal note, a la Sammy, and uh, make a fair offer, guys. Those things will make a very, very strong offer. If you do that, you'll find that your offers are going to get accepted a lot more often than they're going to get turned down. Um, am I allowed to guarantee that? I don't know. Is there a lawyer on here? Am I allowed to? Yachty? No. Marcus? No. Whatever. I'm not going to guarantee it. But again, just think of your kids. They do all the same things, right? And that's how you get your offers accepted more times than not. All right. So look, guys, if you have any questions, do me a favor, write them down below. Khalil said, yo, whoa. That's four O's, I think. Yo, Khalil, what's up, dude? Come on out to Jersey one day. Come hang with me. Let's talk real estate. Let me know what questions you have, any examples you have where any of this maybe worked for you, maybe didn't work for you. If you are buying residential, residentially for yourself and your family, give me a call. If you're selling, you have a question, give me a call. If you're an investor, give me a call. I'm an investor as well. I'm an agent. I'm a human being, like most of you uh, watching me. And, um, you know, we're all in the same boat here, guys. I love helping people. Let me know how I can help you. And I can't wait to work with you. Thanks, everybody. Go out and kick some ass today. And I'll talk, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.